Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be installing elementary OS onto a computer and then after that I'm going to be reviewing it. So some little background information about elementary OS is that it is based off of Ubuntu and but rather than featuring the Unity desktop environment it has the Pantheon desktop environment which is written from scratch using GTK3 and Vala. And in terms of similarity, it is most similar to the GNOME shell. So, elementary OS is still in its beta stages. It is The current version is 0.4, Loki, but it still has very little bugs and works really well. So, let's get started. So, to install elementary OS, go to elementary, oh, elementary.io and you'll be directed to the elementary OS landing page and if you scroll down you can see some information about it some apps that it comes with and so on but what we really want is to download it so to do that go to the top here and click on custom so as you can see by default it is set to a donation amount to purchase elementary OS but if you click on custom and enter zero the button changes to download instead of purchase so that's what we want to do I mean, of course, if you want, you can donate it, which would be really nice. But if you just want to download it, click enter zero and click download elementary OS, then click download again. And the file is 1.32 gigabytes. So it will take a while and I'll resume when it is done booting up. So this is the installation page for elementary OS. And it looks very similar to Ubuntu's installer. I mean, cause it's based off of Ubuntu, but on the side here, you have your language selection. And then you have two buttons, either to try elementary or install it. If you just want to live boot it, see what has to offer, and kind of test it out, you can hit try elementary, in which you don't have to do any of these steps. But if you want to install it to your hard drive, click install elementary. Next, you can select the options for your installation. So if you want to download updates while installing elementary, you can do that, which saves a lot of time after installation. You can also check install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, Flash, MP3, and other media. And if you want everything to be installed right now, you can select both of these options. Click continue. Now next is the page on which you can select your partitioning scheme. So if you have an operating system already installed on this computer, you will have another option saying that you can adjust the partitions manually. But you have, if you have no operating system, you only have this option here, so you want to check that. And if you want to encrypt it, you can do that. And if you want to manually partition it, click something else. And here you can select exactly which devices you want for your installation, but I'm just going to use this regular Array Disk and Install Elementary and hit Install Now. And then it'll give you a warning saying, are you sure you want to format your disks? Say Continue if you're ready and it should start installing right now. So after the after you've entered that in, you can select your time zone and then your keyboard layout. Down here you can test your keyboard layout. Make sure it works properly. Okay, good. Click continue. And now here is where you can set up your user profile. So you can just enter in your name, the name of your computer, your username and a strong password good and then you can either select if you want to log in automatically when it's booting up or to log in every time you turn on your computer and you can also encrypt your home folder which is kind of like your base folder where everything is stored in click continue and everything should just install on its own yep so I'll resume this video when it's finished installing. So the installation for elementary OS has finished and I'm going to restart and boot into it right now. So I just ejected the installation medium and elementary OS booted up. And upon the first boot, we can see the login screen. 
So on the side here, on the left side, we have the users. So you have your main user, and then this other one, if you had another one here. And on the right side, you have the time and the date. Up at the top, you have your power menu, and you can either shut down, restart, cancel, and then your connections at the top. So let me log into my computer. Kind of fades away nicely like that. Now here is the Pantheon desktop environment. So on the bottom, there is a dock here, which has some apps that you might use frequently. Up here on the left hand top corner, you have your application menu. So here you can search for any apps. So let's look for, I don't know, mail. And you get your mail application. And then you also can move through the pages like so. In the center at the top, you have your time. Looks very similar to the GNOME desktop environment. And again, here you have your notifications, music, sound, and power menu. Okay, so let's try opening up an application. So at the bottom, we have our dock. So let's open up the app center. And at the bottom in your on your icon, you have a little notification counter or badge. So you can see exactly how many updates or messages or emails that you got. So now this application, the software center, is a bit different from other distributions in that everything is initially organized by these big tiles, kind of iOS style, and you can click on one of them. So let's look at Office, and we have a large variety of different applications. Let's see, let's install maybe LibreOffice Draw. Let's click here, let's click on that, and we get something, I guess screenshots, yep, screenshots here, and then a little description down here, and if it hit install, I believe it will start installing, so yeah, it's downloading packages right now, you can see the progress of the download, now it is installing, after downloading it, okay, so it looks like it successfully installed, so let's see if it's in the application menu. And there it is. Let's open it up. Okay, good. We have that. It appeared in our dock. And here it is. Okay, perfect. So that works. And now let's look at the update section of this application to see how we can update it. So on the top, you have two main tabs. One is categories and the other is updates. So I guess here you can... So exactly which ones you want to update or update all of them. So that worked really well. No bugs there. The next application will be the settings. And here we have a settings app that is similar to XFCE and GNOME. I have every all these categories there. And then we have photos. So photos here. Um, I guess you can import photos from like a external USB or hard drive videos to watch movies and videos music player again you can import them a calendar and I believe you can add new calendar here and yeah you can select like a Google calendar if you want and import that in so that's nice mail And you can select exactly which service you want, and then all the information down here. Good. And it does come pre-installed with the Epiphany browser. And this is actually a pretty boring and not too functional browser. It does work, but it does not have a lot of features. And this pr looks pretty outdated. Well, let's just look. look if, let's go to a web page. Okay, that works. It looks kind of like Safari. So that one's kind of a bummer, but okay, that's multitask, but I'm sure you could install other ones. So that's really good. Let's open the terminal, see if everything is work works here. Oh, okay, looks like you do not have a desktop folder, and I believe that is because you cannot actually place icons or files on the desktop itself. So you can't add any icons that you here that you can click on quickly or anything. So you either have to add them here, down here, or just access them from your application menu. That is also a bummer, 
but it's fun. Different style. Let's open up the files, file manager. And here it kind of looks like XFC again. You have your all your folders here, home, documents, downloads, okay, good. And that looks like it works really well. So, okay, last thing, let's try out the screenshot tool. Grab a mouse pointer. You can select exactly what you want. Let's take a screenshot. Let's look at this area right here. Okay, good. And then you can, I guess you could save it here into the folder that you want. Good. So, in general, this distribution is a very solid, stable, and good looking distribution. It has very little bugs, which is why many people prefer it. But one downside of it is that it is not as customizable as other desktop environments. So, even though it does use GTK as its manager and theming engine, I guess. It is hard to actually theme it, and the themes do not work as well on this. But if you're just looking to use it as it is, then this is a great distribution, recommend it a lot. And it's kind of surprising knowing that it is still in the beta stage. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Linux videos, and thanks for watching.